Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Coat of Bell Cross Type Backpack, which is one of the most unique bags that I've had a chance to check out this year. This is actually my first experience with Coat of Bell's products in general. I've always heard great things in particular about their slings. They seem to offer really interesting materials and features, so I was excited to have a chance to check out their new backpack. And, you know, there's definitely some really interesting stuff here. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about my experience testing it over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny, and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, the aesthetic to me feels pretty unique. Coat of Bell seems to have a pretty distinct style. It's kind of a modern, techy vibe. It's fairly functional. There's a lot of straps, attachment points, so it's not a super minimal bag by any means, and it might not be an aesthetic for everybody, but I think that it's interesting in how it stands out. I still think that because it's kind of a modern look, it could work in an office setting. It's going to be great for urban exploration or even for traveling. As far as the materials, the bag feels really solidly built. The exterior is a mixture of X-Pack and Cordura nylon. So along the front, you have kind of the X-Pack texture and that additional weather resistance that's provided by the material. And then along the side, you have this fabric, which still feels really rugged. It's maybe not gonna offer the same level of weather resistance, but it does feel like it'll keep your stuff protected from the elements hold up well to rougher usage. You also have just really premium materials all throughout for the compression straps we'll talk about in a bit, these durable feeling G-hooks, Hypalon attachment points, zipper pulls. You have this magnetic fid lock buckle here. And then of course you have some really nice aqua guarded YKK zippers all throughout. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was glad to see that you have an external water bottle pocket. I was able to fit the same 20 ounce water bottle that I use in a lot of my other daily and travel bag videos. It's a pretty tight fit, especially when the bag is a little more packed out. I don't think you could fit anything much bigger than this 20 ounce bottle here. You do have some elasticity, so when the compartment is not in use, it just gets kind of pulled up close to the side to give the bag a cleaner look. And then you also have some drainage holes at the bottom in case you get caught in some rain or you have any spills. And on top of that, you have this little plastic loop here that feels like a good spot to attach something with a carabiner. So I could hang my Beat Studio headphones. They have a carabiner for their case. Uh, maybe also a hand sanitizer. It's not a super large loop, so a hero clip might have trouble fitting through there, but smaller carabiners can work. If you end up doing that, you just wanna be careful to kind of mind the amount of space that it takes up with the water bottle. So I wouldn't be able to hang my headphones when my water bottle is in the compartment. And then along the front, the bag includes these compression straps, which I am a big fan of, both because they have a buckle that makes it very easy to release them and you know maybe attach an additional item that doesn't fit on the inside, like a yoga mat or a jacket. And then they're you know fairly adjustable and they also help compress the bag down when it's not in use. And I like that these are just fully removable. If you wanna give the bag a cleaner look, if you don't feel like you need them or are gonna use them. So really like the flexibility that's provided there. Along the bottom, you have some Hypalon webbing that you can use to attach additional accessories, maybe a bike light you can clip onto here. And one thing that I noticed about the bag is that there's no side handle, but you do have a comfortable and durable feeling handle at the top. It's got a good amount of padding and kind of the seatbelt like material. So very just comfortable to pick the bag up. It doesn't feel like it's gonna tear or anything like that. And then moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 17 liters when it's compressed with the ability to expand up to about 21 liters. So a pretty good daily bag size. I was able to hold most of the items that I normally like to carry with me. And it's a more compact form factor. So if you don't need a huge bag, if you're shorter, this might be appealing. In general, the bag maintains a pretty you know, slim profile. If you expand the 21 liters all the way out, it can start to get a little bit bulky, but in general, it still felt like something that would be comfortable to use when navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit, and carrying onto most domestic and international airlines. Taking a look at the straps on the back paneling, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. They have a nice amount of padding that feels pretty robust, but still broken in right out of the box. On the inside, you do have sort of a mesh on the straps that's gonna provide you with some breathability. And then these straps have a pretty good width 
for preventing the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. They're not the widest straps by any means, but they match up with the size of the bag pretty well. I didn't notice any fatigue. On the straps, you also have a couple of Hypalon loops where you can hang additional accessories, as well as some D-rings to give you some more flexibility. And then you have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. As far as the back paneling, this has also been really comfortable. You have a similar type of padding to what we saw on the straps, well distributed all throughout. At the bottom, it seems to come up a little bit to give you that extra lumbar support. And then you have the same type of mesh to provide you with the breathability, as well as some elevation, particularly here in the middle, to give you a little more airflow and ventilation while you're walking around throughout the day. Down at the bottom, you have a couple of loops that you can use to attach a waist belt that is not included with the bag, and you also have a nice luggage passenger that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, there's a wide variety of pockets all throughout, which may be love-hate depending on your organizational preferences, but if you like to have a lot of flexibility and space for everything, there's definitely a lot to like here. Starting off on the front, you have a smaller zippered quick access pocket. I like that it has this lip that comes over the zipper to make it just a little bit more protected from the elements and kind of makes it hard to tell that there's even a pocket there. So this is gonna be a great spot for any of those quick grab items such as a cable that I use to charge my phone. I also have a pair of AirPods in here. I put my Peak Design mobile tripod that I've been using lately with my phone. And you also have a little magnetic clip with a ring that you can use to attach your keys, maybe a multi-tool. I like that it has the ability to be removed to just make it easier. You know, when you take the bag off, you can pull this off and it's much easier to get to your keys quickly. On the same side as the water bottle pocket, there's also an additional quick access pocket that feels a little bit more hidden. I almost missed this when I first started using the bag. And so this isn't a huge compartment, but it's gonna be a good spot for other small items that you need to grab more quickly, particularly if you wanna swing the bag around. So in my case at the moment here, I just have a portable battery for my phone. On the other side of the bag, you have two additional compartments. At the top, you have this sort of elastic compartment that has a drawstring closure, which was pretty interesting. I wasn't quite sure what this was meant to have. It feels kind of like the perfect spot for a sanitizer bottle. It, ha it even has a drainage hole here, so if you spill or water gets in there, and you know, it'll allow that to air out. Uh, but yeah, so maybe for some hand sanitizer, um, packable little towel or something. In my case, I actually just put my GoPro in here if it's something that I wanted to grab quickly and it happened to have kind of the right size for it. Uh, but a unique little compartment there. And then below that you have a zippered compartment that's gonna have a little bit more space for anything larger that you need to grab uh, while you're on the go. So in my case, this is actually where I ended up storing my sunglasses with their case. They were able to fit in there pretty comfortably. And then on the inside, you have kind of a divider sleeve where you could place maybe a uh, portable battery, a hard drive, something else. This is kind of, kind of a padded divider sleeve. We'll take a closer look at this uh, from the inside as well. At the moment, the only thing that I placed in here is an additional adapter to charge my phone, my tablet, and my laptop when I'm on the go. Up next, we have the expandable and kind of flexible portion of the bag. This is where the Fidlock buckle comes into play. You have this adjustable buckle here, which is very easy to release. You can also give uh, some additional slack on the compression straps. And then you also have an additional buckle on the bottom. So if you release both buckles, you can start to get a sense of this sort of area that's provided here. It almost looks kind of like a duffel bag, a little bit at the top. And so you can compress this down when you wanna maintain a sleeker look, use the buckles to tighten everything in. And then if you need some additional space on a particular day, you have that. To get into this compartment, you don't always have to release everything. Thankfully, there is a quick access zipper that provides access to this space if you just wanna grab it without having to undo all of the buckles, particularly if you're using the compression straps. That's a really thoughtful feature to include, but then you also have a more duffel style opening here so that you can have more visibility and you know be able to pack everything out. On the inside here, you can get a sense of the bright lining, so high contrast, you can see everything that's on the inside, which is super nice. And just kind of a large bucket of space here for the items that I would wanna carry. At the moment, I have my DJI Mavic Mini, I have GoRuck Shadow Pocket, I have the Evergoods Civic Access Pouch, one liter, and then I also have 
Tom Ben Ghostwell pouch. And on the inside of this compartment, you have some internal zippered mesh pockets that might be good for smaller things that you don't want to fall out. Actually, the top one is a slip pocket. It doesn't have a zipper per se. And then you have a zippered one on the bottom. So nice that you have some internal organization, not something that I would probably use as I would be putting so many pouches here. But if you don't use pouches, you do have some built-in help for that. And then this might also be a good area if you wanted to use this maybe for a shorter trip, an overnight trip or a weekend. If you're a light packer, this is the type of place where I would maybe put a smaller packing cube or a change of clothes as well as a dop kit and you know anything else that I might need for the trip. The last area we're gonna be taking a look at is the laptop and tech compartment. So this has a zipper that opens up pretty much fully clamshell all the way. So you have some nice visibility into the rest of, of the volume of the bag. Again, that bright lining, making it very easy to see everything that's on the inside. And so you have a nice amount of space on the front. This is where my pouches and everything were resting. I kept the bulkier ones here and then distributed the other ones to the front of the bag. Uh, at the moment, what I have here is the Evergood Civic Access Pouch 2 liters, and then the Tom Tuck Pouch that I featured in a recent video. If you wanna check that out to get a better sense of how I load that one out. Really, I just wanted to showcase how much space this offered in addition to the area that we looked at on the front. So still a good amount of capacity here. I like that it's a little more open for those bulkier items. And then, in this area, this could be another place to put a packing cube if you wanted to use this as a travel bag. And inside you have some light organization. You have a zippered mesh compartment to kind of separate out uh, either clothing, toiletries, uh, or just additional accessories. Interesting shape on this one. And then you have a slip pocket here. It doesn't have any elasticity. Still a good spot for maybe taller accessory. Put maybe an umbrella in here. You actually also have an adjustable uh, additional pocket here, which might be a better spot for an umbrella, packable jacket, uh, or even an additional water bottle, although I wouldn't maybe want that near the tech area. So nice flexibility there, but you know, as you can see, if you don't wanna use them, they just kinda stay out of the way. And then on the other side, you have more of an admin and tech area. So on the front, you have some simple organization, a couple of slip pockets. I like that these have really nice feeling mesh and some elasticity. So they're gonna mold around the items that are on the inside. And this one here, I have my Apple Magic Mouse. And then on the one next to that, which is a similar size, I just have a deck of playing cards, but that could be a placeholder for a hard drive, portable battery or something like that. Behind that, you have more slip pockets. Generally, when I use one of these, I don't use both because it starts to get really tight. So kind of just pick which one, and I generally go with the mesh ones, but you do have some additional organization. This one is kind of a larger slip pocket for maybe something like a multi-tool. If you have a Leatherman or a larger flashlight, and next to that you have a couple of small slots where I have a pen and one of my flashlights. And then behind those, you have a dedicated tablet and laptop sleeve. I like that they both offer pretty good amount of padding. In this first one, I have my iPad mini 2 with a case. It fits in there comfortably, but this would definitely be able to hold up to an 11 inch tablet. And I like that it's pulled up off the bottom of the ground. So when you place your device down, you won't have to worry about anything. Same for the laptop compartment. This is also pulled up off the bottom. Good amount of padding. You can see the, the false bottom here. And on the inside, there's no sort of fleece lining, but just a nice bright liner. This should be able to hold up to a 15 inch laptop comfortably, maybe a 16. Currently what I have is a 13 inch MacBook Air. You can see that fits in there easily. And so now with the compartment emptier, you can get a better look at the inside. It comes up a decent amount. So if you have a little bit of a thicker device, it should be able to fit in there comfortably. And with the padding that's offered here and the fact that it's suspended, it really feels like your device is gonna be well protected while you're running around throughout the day. And so really like the uh, flexibility that's offered in all these compartments. There's a lot of different organizational options throughout. It can be a little bit overwhelming as you're first starting to use the bag, but if you like something that's gonna give you a place to put everything and easily find it once you kind of get a hang of how you wanna lay everything out, and you're also looking for something unique that will give you a little bit of flexibility, but still have the capacity to you know compress down into something more compact, then this is gonna be a really interesting option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a pretty good experience testing out the Code of Bell Cross-Type backpack over the past couple of weeks. 
You can currently purchase this on the company site for about $289, which is definitely a little more premium pricing. It is a bit of an investment. You are, however, getting a very well-built bag that's gonna have a really unique feature set, and it's gonna compare pretty well to other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Air Fit Pack 3, which has been one of my favorite work tech slash gym bags over the past couple of years. Like this one, it has kind of a unique shape. It doesn't necessarily have the same feature set, but it has the duffel style opening along the front, a separate section for your tech and other admin accessories, a well padded and suspended laptop compartment. The harness system on Air's bags is some of my favorite of any bags in general. It has a luggage pass through. There's also the Duffel Pack 3, which is a little bit bigger if you need some extra space. I like that both of those bags offer the separate shoe compartment, which is what makes it a great gym bag. And then it's just really solidly built. It is offered in X-Pack in addition to Ballistic Nylon, and it's gonna come in at a slightly lower price point. So if you're looking for something that's a little more gym focused, that still has a kind of a modern techie vibe, that's gonna be one of the best options to take a look at. Another bag this made me think of is the Bellroy Venture 22 liter backpack. We've looked at a couple of different bags from Bellroy recently. The Venture Ready 26 liter is a really great option, but the 22 liter reminds me of this one a little more just because it has some adjustability as far as its volume. It has a top loading compartment with a couple of different loops that you can adjust depending on how much you're carrying. It also opens up flat so that you can easily pack and organize everything. That one has definitely a simpler layout, but it still has nice organizational options spread throughout the bag. It's got a very rugged build quality. It's comfortable to wear. It's got really interesting kind of outdoorsy aesthetic that's still clean enough to take into the office as Bellroy does so well. It comes in at a pretty similar price point. So if you're looking for something that offers, you know, the same sort of kind of rugged um, take on the aesthetic as well as the adjustable volume, um, then that's going to be a fantastic option to consider. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Able Carry Daily Backpack. They recently released the Daily Plus as well. I haven't had a chance to check that one out, but the Daily and the Daily Plus remind me as far as aesthetic of this bag, particularly in the X-Pack, they just have kind of a more futuristic, slightly tactical, functional vibe. Able Carry has the A-frame with webbing all around the bottom, which you know, just gives it that extra bit of character and functionality that reminds me of this bag. Organizationally, the bags are pretty different in that Able Carry takes a much more minimalistic and simplistic approach. There's just a couple of compartments. So, you know, if you like this style of bag, that's gonna be durable, comfortable, offer a nice amount of weather resistance and space, but that's not gonna have as many pockets and will leave you a little more flexibility with kind of how you organize your stuff, either through the use of pouches, or things like that, and you just want something kind of like this from a smaller company that you know is very unique and reliable, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to take a look at as well. With that being said, the Coat of Vell Cross Type Backpack holds up pretty well against all those options, and although it might not be for everybody, if you're looking for something that is really unique and that's gonna offer plenty of organization and protection for your essentials, then this is gonna be a really great option to consider. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the cross type backpack and how it compares to some of the other popular tech and EDC bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.